Hey, good evening. Thank you all for coming to this um, concert, whether you're just passing through and listening to us while you walk by or whether you decide to take a seat and, and listen to a few tunes. We have a wonderful program for you this evening. We're starting with some music for flute and clarinet duo. Um, that'll be followed by some music that's beautiful music for double bass and piano. And then some of our top uh, singers at the end of the program for some opera and also some popular music that I know you'll recognize. Um, it's a pleasure for us to be here. My name is Nick Morrison. I'm professor of clarinet here at Utah State, and I'm joined by my flutist colleague and spouse, Leslie Timmons, professor of flute and elementary music education here at Utah State, and we're delighted to, to open tonight's program with three short selections for you. Um, tonight, we're going to base our program simply on sound and the way composers use sound and in a way how that developed over time. All three composers that we'll play, we'll play tonight are American. All three of them are contemporary composers. And we'll start with a piece that uh, comes to us from New York by a New York composer named Martin Gould. The title of the piece is Unison, which means together. And you'll notice probably that most of the time, Leslie and I are playing the same note um, or else we're playing in octaves. It's really some of the simplest material that you can use in music. We'll then follow that with a piece that's in some ways similar by Chicago composer Roger Zare. Um, Mr. Zare wrote this piece originally for soprano saxophone and flute. Then he did an arrangement for us that uses the clarinet. That also begins on a unison, but he starts playing with offsetting it in terms of time. And it's uh, the technical term is counterpoint, when you offset this melody um, one, one beat to another so that you actually create a piece of music by having similar melodies that are displaced in time. For this piece, we're actually displaced by half a beat, so it's really close counterpoint. You might also recognize a little quotation at the end of that from the music of Johann Sebastian Bach, those of you that are listeners. So we'll play those first two pieces with just a little bit of a pause in between them because they're sort of related in the way they're put together, even though they sound entirely different. And then we'll follow up with the third piece, which treats different elements of sound, even than those first two. So Unison by Morton Gould, followed by Reinvention by Roger Zare.
So thank you. I ho hopefully you recognize the little Bach quote at the end. And neither of those was particularly tuneful. So you might be having that thought of, well, I just don't really love modern music that much. And that's OK. But it's really interesting kinds of textures. And it's sometimes an acquired taste. So keep coming back. The virtue of a lot of modern pieces is they're really short. And then you're on to the next thing. So thanks for your patience of sitting through that. We now have a, what I think is a very cool piece by a Utah composer who started his musical career in Chicago as a punk rocker. And he founded a band in the 80s called Phil and the Blanks. Philip Kent Bimstein is his name. And his band was on tour of the Western United States. He saw Zion's Park at the southern part of Utah and loved it, left the band, bought a house in Springdale, and started writing classical music. But classical music with a twist. He took his tape recorder out into the park, out into the fields, into his home, and he recorded natural sounds and sounds that other people make and people talking, right? And he created soundscapes that form the background for pieces of music. So we know these concerts kind of take place around dinner time, and we can't offer you any food. But this piece is based on food, so maybe it'll make you hungry. It's called Cats in the Kitchen. And Philip has two cats. He and his uh, spouse have two cats. And they apparently like to whack the pots and pans and make noise when they're in the kitchen and they meow and stuff. So this piece is called Eggs and Toast. It's got all the kinds of sounds that you might think of when you're making breakfast. Pepper grinders, bread being sliced, um, uh, what else? Eggs being whisked in a bowl. Um, so this is Eggs and Toast by Philip Bimstein. Perhaps not something you'd expect a couple of full professors of music to be playing, but we're pretty confident you'll enjoy it.
Thank you so much. Have a wonderful evening. Stay tuned for music for piano and bass and voices. Good evening, everyone. My name is Bron Khan. I'm an assistant professor of double bass and jazz studies here. And I'm joined by Emily Azola, a member of our piano faculty. And we're going to play a short piece for you by the great Russian uh, composer and conductor and bassist, Sergei Kusevitsky. Although he was Russian, he spent a lot of his time here in the US and was actually director of the Boston Symphony Orchestra for many years. And this is from a collection of four short pieces that he wrote for the bass. This is called Andante. Thanks so much. Stick around now and enjoy some of the great vocalists from our music department. My name is Andrew Taylor. I am a new voice faculty, uh, adjunct faculty at USU. I uh, just finished my master's degree at University of Colorado Boulder in vocal performance and pedagogy. I will be singing Granada by Augustin Laura. 
Uh, it is from a Spanish zarzuela, which is kind of like a Spanish opera. Hello, my name is Benjamin Crouch. It is my personal mission that people someday will be able to pronounce my last name correctly when they see it. So it's pronounced Crouch. That's kind of pretentious, but that's kind of my thing. I'll be singing first an aria from Andre Previn's 1998 opera, A Streetcar Named Desire. At this part in the opera, Mitch has fallen in love with, a, with an older woman named Blanche who has been through a lot in her life. 
And he tells her that no matter what we've been through, we deserve to have love. So this is Mitch's aria. Thank you. And my next song will come from a lesser known TV show called Gallivant. And the premise of Gallivant is thinking about every Disney musical that you've ever listened to, and then writing a Disney musical making fun of every Disney musical that you've ever listened to. So in the plot in the show, King Richard has just gone through a separation with his wife and is coming back to his own castle and has found out that his peasants decided they're not a big fan of the monarchy, so they decided to try democracy. And he's found himself out of a job. And he wonders, what would life be like if I were a jolly blacksmith? If I were a jolly blacksmith, what a happy guy I'd be. I would do all kinds of blacksmith stuff in my blacksmithery. I would hit the thing with the other thing till I made a different thing. If I were a jolly blacksmith. No, that doesn't sound right. Besides, I'd get filthy. There must be something easier. If I were a friendly farmer, wouldn't that be oh so sweet? I'd be planting greens and lots of beans and other things to eat. Then I'd plant a cow, then a couple pigs, then a yummy chocolate cake. That's not right either. Besides, any fool can plant a cake. I want to be something special, liked. Needed. I've got it. If I were a merry brewer, that would be a grand career. I would pick the grapes and peel the grapes and stop them into beer. Damn it! I guess I'm not good at being anything but king. 
and no one wants me to be king. If I'm just a jolly nothing, what am I supposed to do? I don't have a skill, no niche to fill, no one to come home to. Don't know where to go, don't know how to fit, don't know who to even be. If I were a jolly tailor, juggler, barber, wet nurse, cesspool worker, what difference does it make? I would still be me. Hello, my name is Megan Warburton. I am also part of the voice faculty here at Utah State University. I will be singing two songs. The first one is A Trip to the Library. It's from the musical She Loves Me. In this part in the musical, it's towards the end, and Ilona, the character, she's been dating this guy, but he has not been a very good boyfriend the whole time. So she's decided, she's like, I'm not gonna date him anymore, and she decides, hey, I'm going to turn a new leaf and go to the library, and she meets someone very special there. And suddenly all of my confidence dribbled away with a pitiful plop. My head was beginning to spin and my forehead was covered with cold perspiration. I started to reach for a book, but my hand automatically came to a stop. Don't know how long I stood frozen, a victim of panic and mortification. Oh, how I wanted to flee when a kindly voice, a gentle voice, whispered, Pardon me. And there was this dear, sweet, Clearly respectable, thickly bespectacled man who stood by my side and quietly said to me, Ma'am, don't mean to intrude, but I was just wondering, are you in need of some help? I said, No. Yes, I am. The next thing I know, I'm sipping hot chocolate and telling my troubles to Paul, whose tender brown eyes kept sending compassionate looks. A trip to the library has made a new girl of me, for suddenly I can see the magic of books. Oh. I have to admit, in the back of my mind, I was praying he wouldn't get fresh. And all the while, I was wondering why an illiterate girl should attract him. Then all of a sudden, he said that I couldn't go wrong with the way of all flesh. Of course, it's a novel, but I didn't know, or I certainly wouldn't have smacked him. Well, he gave me a smile that I couldn't resist. And I knew at once how much I liked this optometrist. That's right, optometrist. You know what this dear, sweet, clearly respectable gentleman said to me next? He said he could solve this problem of mine. I said, how? He said, if I'd like, he'd willingly read to me some of his favorite things. I said, when? He said, now.
His novel approach seemed highly suspicious and possibly dangerous too. I told myself, wait, think, dare you go up to his flat? What happens if things go wrong? It's obvious he's quite strong. He read to me all night long. Now how about that? It's hard to believe how truly domestic and happily hopeful I feel. I picture my Paul there reading aloud as I cook. As long as he's there to read, there's quite a good chance indeed. A chance that I'll never need to open a book. Unlike someone else, someone I dimly recall, I know he'll only have eyes for me, my optometrist pal. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. We're so happy to see you all here. We're, we're glad to make music outdoors. This is our last number of the night. It's I Have Confidence from The Sound of Music. What will this day be like? I wonder. What will my future be? I wonder. It could be so exciting to be out in the world, to be free. My heart should be wildly rejoicing. Oh, what's the matter with me? I've always longed for adventure, to do the things I've never dared. Now here I'm facing adventure. so scared a captain with seven children what's so fearsome about that oh I must stop these doubts all these worries if I don't I just know I'll turn back I must dream of the things I am seeking I am seeking the courage I lack the courage to serve them with reliance Face my mistakes without defiance Show them I'm worthy And while I show them I'll show me So let them bring on any problems I'll do better than my best I have confidence they'll put me to the test But I'll make them see I have confidence in me Somehow I will impress them I will be firm but kind And all those children, heaven bless them They will look up to me And mind me with each step I am more certain Everything will turn out fine I have confidence the world can all be mine Besides what you see, I have confidence in me I have confidence in sunshine I have confidence in rain I have confidence that spring will come again besides what you see I have confidence in me strength doesn't lie in numbers strength doesn't lie in Strength lies in nights of peaceful slumbers When you wake up, wake up! It's healthy, all I trust I leave my heart to All I trust becomes my own I have confidence in confidence alone Oh help! I have confidence in confidence alone you see, I have confidence 